Our guest speaker this evening wears many hats. Rabbi Nate Siegel is the rabbi of the New Springsville Jewish Center in Staten Island, New York. Rabbi Siegel is also the director of day school and community development for Torah Masora, the National Society of Hebrew Day Schools. When the story will be written one day, describing the growth of Torah around the world, a name on top of that list will be Rabbi Siegel. About a year ago, Suri and I had a meeting with Rabbi Siegel in his house, and at that time he had visited every state but two. I'm not sure where he was up to at this point. It's mind-boggling how one person can be intimately involved with so many communities. It's obviously his bountiful love for Paul Yisrael, the Jewish people. We at CTC have been very fortunate to have Rabbi Siegel as a friend and a mentor. And we are very grateful to Rabbi Siegel coming this evening. Without further ado, Rabbi Siegel. If I may, there is a person in this room who I know for over 45 years, and I'm only 53 years old. I uh, grew up with him, and um, 45 years later, I have to admit to him publicly that he had a profound effect on my life, maybe more than anything else. He simply let me know that he cared about me. And that's Rabbi Rum Powers. <laughs> father of your Levinson, who my father, who live and be well, speaks about him very highly because he knows you for more than 45 years. And I just hope and pray that the Yehoshua should, should give you good health, many years, and much nachas from your family and everything that you're involved with. I am amazed at the crowd that is gathered here. And I really just want to share with you, if I may, a few thoughts. A few weeks ago in the Torah, we read about Noah and the flood. It's a very fascinating thing. What did Noah do the entire time he was in the ark? So we're told that Noah fed the animals. Somebody had to take care of the animals, and that was his job. And he fed them. Day and night he was taking care of the animals. And we're told that one time Noah, Noah was late for one meal. And he was about to serve the lion, and he came late. So we're told that he was punished. And what was the punishment? The lion bit him. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. Rav Hutner asks the question, what, what, what did he do wrong? Imagine if in one year, they were only late for dinner one time. We'd be dancing in the streets. <laughs> he was late one time, and the lion bit him. So what was the answer? Why was he punished? So one of the answers that is given is that this lion was the last lion. If this lion didn't survive, there'd be no more lions in the world. So because this was the last lion, it had to be treated with the highest level of care, compassion, concern, chesed, goodness that a person could have. Noah's obligation was to reach levels of care and compassion that he never thought he could reach in taking care of this lion. Because if this lion didn't survive, there'd be no more lions. And this, my friends, is the story of the Jewish people here in the United States of America. In many ways, we are all the last lions. You know, we speak often about the Holocaust, six million Jews, 
60 years ago in the United States, there were 6 million Jews. Nothing more than the natural birth rate. There should be over 18 million Jews in America, if not more. The real number is less than 5 million. So what's happened? What's happened to all the Jews? We make memorials for the 6 million. What are we doing about all those we lost? The truth of the matter is, they lost interest in Judaism. They just are not interested. The great society we live in in America of no values, no standards, and no morals has won the battle. And millions of Jews have disappeared. And I must tell you, we are reaching very dangerous times. And the times that we live in demand action. We cannot just sit around and talk anymore. We must take action to save the last lions, our brothers and sisters across this fruited plain.